Okay, so last time we were talking about evaluating the position, right? And we had three factors that can help you to evaluate and understand what, what's going on in any random position that you have. And today we're gonna to talk about a new set of three things. And this is more focused on how you think about those positions. So it's, it's not necessarily related to, like these are the positional ideas that are in all all positions it's more like how do you think about making the decision at the chessboard so the it's it's called the three questions approach and it, it's not my idea it's something that has been popularized by Jakob Ogard who's a strong coach um, I think he's probably one of the best coaches around right now um, before him it was Mark Doretsky but he passed away a few years ago so when when you're reading chess books you'll see these two names a lot it'll be like Dvoretsky this, Dvoretsky that, and then Ogard is also um, very renowned worldwide for his chess advice. And he suggests that people think about their decisions in terms of these three questions, which are, what are the tactical targets or weaknesses? He says weaknesses, but I add the tactical targets to make it super clear that um, we're also looking for tactics while we do this. Um, the second one is, what is the worst place piece? And I'll often make that plural so that you understand that we're not thinking about just what is our opponent's worst place piece, but also what is our worst place piece. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is what is the opponent's idea? We don't need to figure out what's our idea because if we knew that, we would just play it. So um, we're only yeah. worried about our opponent's idea. Mm -hmm. And when you combine these three things, it can help you to streamline your thought process. I think a lot of people, they might know a lot of things about chess where they're like, okay, this is the values of the pieces. And here's something about this pawn structure that I have in my game, or maybe I know this opening prep, whatever, like specific things, but they have a disorganized thought process and it's it's difficult to pull the trigger and make a, a good move. They'll often get like too many ideas. They won't know which one's important. So hopefully this method can help you with that and helps other people too. I know that um, I use it, it's applicable at all levels, so it'll serve you for a long time. So a little bit about why I present them in this order. The order doesn't really matter. You can, you can see that these are independent questions, right? Like our opponent's idea is not necessarily linked to what are the tactical targets. So the reason we do it in this order is I think that sometimes you don't have to go through all three questions in order to figure out the best move. And I think that most often, if you need just one question, it's what are the tactical targets? If you see a winning tactic, you play it, right? We don't care about uh, the details, like what my opponent wanted to do while we're checkmating them in one turn. <laughs> so there's that. And worst place pieces, a lot of the time the combination of targets and worst place pieces will give you what you want to do immediately. Because if I can improve my worst place piece and attack their weakness, then that's already pretty great. The opponent's idea part is usually for more nuanced situations. But while you're while you're learning this way of thinking, I think it's useful to try to use all three, like pretty much whenever you can. Alright, do you have any questions about that before we see some examples? Nope. Alright. I picked a couple of my games, old games, um, because they're short and to the point, and I think because they're my old games, they might be like pretty easy to understand. And they, they present a few opportunities for um, decision making. So let's get into it. In this first one, I was playing Black. Mm -hmm. I think both of the games that I picked are from World Open um, tournaments. I don't think they were the same year, but it was like 2015, maybe 2014, like a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And... For this game, I chose to play this e5 opening, like what you do, and my opponent played d4. Pop quiz, do you remember the name of this opening? You might not have run across it yet, so it's okay if you don't, but just want to see. Uh, it probably came up a bunch in my games, but like, no, I, I just sort of like, oh, it's called this, and then goldfish memory goes, this is important. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of like that too. I can't remember the names yeah. of a lot of openings. Um, yeah. In fact, I was I was reading something, just some random thing, and I realized that the the scholars mate and uh, lightning attack type stuff that we talked about in our first session 
Um, they have names that are not those things as well. Oh. So it, they're named after like some people or something. And oh. I, and even though I just looked at it, I still can't tell you who those people were or what their names are. Like I just can't remember. Um, anyway, this one is easy for me to remember because I like scotch. This is the scotch game. Ah. And it can easily turn into the scotch gambit as well. So you can remember that scotch game is a lot like Italian because they're going to do some very similar things. For instance, if they want to play Scotch Gambit, they'll play Bishop C4, and this is like Italian style development, but they sacrificed a pawn to try to speed it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's not a true Gambit in the sense that um, black cannot really hold on to this pawn anyway, so yeah. it's not exactly a Gambit. In fact, it can turn into the Italian directly if you play Bishop C5 here. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, white will play c3, and you can see it's inching a little bit closer to being just like the Italian. Mm -hmm. And if black isn't greedy and they just play some move like knight f6, voila, this is the same as our Italian opening. Yeah. So, they're, they're close cousins. Mm -hmm. um, once removed. So, next, in this game they played knight takes d4, and this is called scotch game, which is not a gambit because they didn't give up any anything for initiative mm -hmm. and I played bishop c5 with a big threat to take on d4 mm -hmm. and they played bishop e3 so just supporting the knight no big deal all normal stuff so far mm -hmm. and I played queen f6 mm -hmm. with the idea of what what do you think black is trying to do here uh, it looks like you're going to eventually attack uh, f2. Okay, could be. What about right now? Like, if I got an extra extra move, what would I play? The knight in the way looks pretty attacked by your pieces, so I would probably take uh, so knight takes d4. Yeah, here. right. So we're threatening to win a piece. Yeah. So if if it was, if we were thinking about this from White's perspective, we're mostly going to think about my perspective. Um, yeah. But if we were thinking about what White should do here, they're going to see my opponent's idea is knight takes d4. Mm -hmm. My weaknesses might be f2. Their weaknesses, what what do you think Black's weaknesses might be in this position? Ooh. Um, so bishop on c8 can't see anything. Mm -hmm. And. Maybe any tactical targets, like something that's not protected. Right, yeah. So that's what I was looking at next. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So that file in front of the king is looking pretty open. Half open, yeah. Yeah. That'll and probably then, matter more when rooks get out into the game. But it could, it right. could be important. But otherwise, um, the, the bishop is completely hanging. Yeah, so the bishop is another major target here. The bishop on c5. Um, so how do you think white should deal with this? Like, they know the, the tactical targets are maybe this bishop on c5, maybe maybe even the knight on c6, or their own f2 square could be weak. I think if you look deeper, you can find more weaknesses, too, for both sides. Yeah, um, yeah in that case, I would probably play c3, or, yeah, c3 to both support the knight and then also prepare for b4 to attack the uh, bishop. Yeah, that's right. Um, if we consider the question of worst place piece, before mm -hmm. c3 is, is probably the best move here mm -hmm. because you just really can't afford to lose that knight. But mm -hmm. thinking generally, you know, let's say we play c3 and knight g e7 and white wants to figure out what their worst place piece is. Which one, which one do you yeah. think it would be? Ooh, um... So am I looking at the weakest black piece now? No, like, just, let's focus on this one question. Just what is our worst place piece? Remember, it's for both sides, like our own or yeah, theirs. Yeah, sure. Okay, you already so identified the their bishop is pretty bad on c8. It's, it's still hanging. <laughs> and then uh, the pawn on e4 is also hanging on white side. Mm-hmm. But worst place piece doesn't actually mean the same as tactical targets. Sure. So if it's hanging or if it's easy to attack or if mm -hmm. it's undefended, those are all things that go under weak 
like weaknesses or tactical targets but a piece can be badly placed even if it's not easy to attack it could be a limited function yeah so probably then the the knight on b1 okay looking pretty sleepy does it have any competitors for sleepiness or is it is that the only bad piece both rooks (laughs) Uh uh-huh what else? I think there's something more important than the rooks because the rooks usually come into the game slowly anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, the queen's pretty mobile and it has two open diagonals, so I'm not going to count that. Yeah, we don't know where it belongs yet. Yeah. But otherwise, king is looking a bit vulnerable since the okay. squares are out of So what would you want to do to make the king safer? Castle. And what's in the way? Uh, bishop on f1. So that's why that's the worst place piece. Oh, okay. It's preventing okay. your castling. It makes it difficult to activate the rook on h1. Mm-hmm. But it, it's like a close a close tie with the bishop on, on f1 and the knight on b1. Those are both badly okay. placed minor pieces. So even though they can't be attacked right now, they're not helping either. So for that reason, uh, white played bishop c4. But this is all like opening theory stuff, so I don't really want to focus here too much. Mm-hmm. Um, I played knight e5. They played bishop mm-hmm. b3. They mm-hmm. could have played something different, but this is what they chose, trying to stay active. Yeah. I played d6, and they played f3, which I thought was an unusual move. So let's start here from black's perspective. Um, we want to answer all three of the three questions which okay. are tactical targets, also known as weaknesses, worst place piece, and your opponent's idea. So um, think about it for just a minute. It's okay if yep. you want to just take it all in. Then <laughs> uh, let me know what you think the answers are. All right, so the most immediate thing I see is that like they probably should have castled last turn, but they didn't. So now there's this nice, juicy open diagonal, uh, which could be attacked. You mean this one? Yes. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, like the 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 knight still hasn't moved from B one, so it's still pretty poorly placed. Yeah. And then the idea now is, I'm not sure what was what the thought was with the last move, besides maybe just supporting the pawn. But it seems like a poor trade for. I, I can um, explain this actually. So okay. <laughs> the move's not illogical, although it is a little bit yeah. a little bit strange. Yeah. Um, it actually comes back to this move bishop to b3. Mm-hmm. See, when I play knight to e5, I'm yeah. neglecting my development temporarily. But mm-hmm. I am threatening to take this bishop and asking them a tricky question. Where do you want to put your bishop? And it turns out the answer to that question could be bishop e2 because you don't want to see the move knight g4. And the way you would come to this conclusion is actually with the three questions. Mm -hmm. So um, let's fast forward again. So white committed this possible error with bishop b3, Mm -hmm. d6. And now let's say that you want to castle, right? You already know that this is something that you generally want to do. Maybe you consider your king the worst place piece and you want to improve it. Um, But let's think about those other questions. What are the tactical targets or maybe your opponent's idea before you go ahead and castle? Yeah, so f2 still looks fairly vulnerable, even though now the bishop is kind of, sort of, protecting it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, once once the pawn moves up, I, I guess it just changes the structure a bit and then makes it so that uh, those two are no longer protecting each other, and then... Uh, you're pushing out your territory a bit, so I guess you're controlling more of the one color that you are on, but then... That would justify yeah. F3, but let's, let's not focus on on the move F3. Let's let's okay, see sorry. like what's wrong with castling. What could the downside of that be, if we just think about targets and uh, your opponent's idea? So... This is not an easy question. So yeah, I, I get the feeling that it leads to... A knight fork of some kind just because your knight is pretty deep uh-huh um, like where where you, do you think that would happen um so either of 
Well, it would have to be D3 since F3 would be protected by the pawn on G2. But yeah, that could happen. But then I'm not sure happen. what you're <laughs> So, yeah, if, if I castle, knight d3 is yeah. also not going to even be check. Mm -hmm. So that is an idea that will come up if white does not castle. Mm -hmm. But let's say that we do it. Like, I'll just play it on the board. So we castle. Okay. Yeah. And now um, black could play a normal move here. For instance, they could play, like, bishop d7. Yeah. And in this case, it just seems like white... Castle their king, black played a normal move, like we don't really understand anything about why you might play f3. But let's say that they play a move that uses a square that's protected by a pawn on f3. Like, how can they use one of these two squares on this move? Oh, okay. So then if you were to go for g4, then you're threatening uh mate by the queen on h2, since now the vulnerable square becomes h2 instead of f2. Okay, yeah. So if I could put the knight on g4, I might start attacking h2. That's true. Mm -hmm. There's another thing about knight g4. Mm. So even if I'm not harassing the h2 square in particular, yeah. um, let's say that um, maybe I will protect my h pawn by playing h3. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just kind of saying, you know, I don't want to play f3 to guard g4. I'd rather play h3. And I don't mind letting you play knight g4. What should black play here? Um, oh. So I'm looking at knight takes bishop on e3, uh -huh. but then, I mean, that results in the knight immediately being taken back, but then... Yeah, so if there were, if there were a black bishop on... <laughs> c4 which is a bit of wishful thinking maybe this would be interesting <laughs> yes <laughs> so the idea is actually to take this bishop and we'll get into the weeds a little bit here so after f takes e3 um white's pawn structure is not very good yeah we've we've seen that the doubled pawns can be useful but they can also be tremendously weak so they might have been worried about this. However, there is a major uh, windfall here for white in the sense that when the pawn goes to e3, it activates this rook. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what they missed, that yeah. this idea would be very good for black if there was not the fact that after a move like queen h6, mm -hmm. there's a tactical blow. So what are the tactical targets here for, for white? What are we attacking on the black side? Uh, f7 looks pretty weak. So what will you play? Uh, bishop takes f7. Yeah, that's check, so they can't do much about it. Yeah. I guess I would go maybe here. And now what mm -hmm. do you do? Check again. More check? No, I wouldn't do more check. <laughs> because if you play a 96, I'll just take it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I thought about it, and then I saw the bishop, and I was like... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to think about things like that though <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so try to use the three questions I, again like yeah. tactical targets opponent's idea mm -hmm. the queen is well out in the open so i think there could be a way to just box it in with your pieces the black like, queen i mean yeah but that might be like too um too many moves wasted on just the queen Especially well, if you get like, it, then you're happy. But if yeah. it takes a long time and it's yeah. not forced, there's a good chance that it's not really going to happen. Right. So, for instance, if I wanted to start attacking their queen, I would probably start with a move like knight f5. I mm -hmm. don't see any other move that attacks the queen that makes sense. Do you? No. But once you go there, like, how long is that threat going to live? Just one move? Because, again, black can play. Bishop takes f5, right? Yeah. In fact, this highlights one of the, one of the reasons that I think it's it's good to answer the three questions before you start calculating. Mm -hmm. If if you play like this, chop chop. Maybe I'll take with the. I don't know what I want. I think I guess I'll take with the pawn. Yeah. Um, because if I take with the rook, then the knight can take it. But here you yeah. can see that this pawn on e three is weak. Yeah. 
So either you can figure this out by calculating a variation, which can be mm -hmm. energy intensive and time intensive, or you can come back to this position right here, and or even earlier, and say what are the weaknesses for both sides. Oh, this, As a would, general this would have helped so much on like the worksheets that you gave. Yeah, we've talked about this a little <laughs> bit, but you know this yeah. this is a little bit more in depth. Yeah, yeah deeper than what we've already worked on. Yeah, because like, I, I remember you mentioning this in the first lesson, but mm -hmm. like it didn't resonate at that point. I think just checks captures threats stuck because check, it was checks short. captures threats is basically like question one. Yeah, where you're like, what are my tactical much. targets? But at this point, weaknesses is a much more um, ephemeral or vague or general category of moves, too. So getting a little more abstract as we go. I also remembered opponent's idea. So there were times in puzzles where, like, I saw that back rank was about to happen or, mm -hmm. like, checkmate with queen supported by something was about to happen. Mm hmm and so, like, the answer was to either, like, check for tempo or prevent that from happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. A lot a lot of these puzzles on, on light chess are about, like, don't get checkmated while you win the game. <laughs> yeah. Just very, very weird, actually. So, like, people who come from chess.com usually will complain bitterly about these, like, defending puzzles. They're like, oh, this yeah. isn't a tactics puzzle. I'm just not getting checkmated. But then it's like, oh, well, you didn't find it. So maybe you need to work on that. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I, I've been steadily incorporating this where I'm like, oh, what is your what's your opponent up to? What are they attacking? But it, it's all kind of coming around to this this big thing with the three questions. So we can we can see early on that e3 is a weakness, and that's mm -hmm. that's something that probably White understood because a little bit of background here. We were saying that f2 is a weakness early on, and I was kind of like, yeah, yeah. That's true. But it's actually like all of these are weak. Oh, okay. And it shows up in different variations, for instance. Yeah. Um, let's say that they had played the move um, knight takes c6, because we said the knight was a weakness at some point, right? One way that you can deal with your problems is you can trade them away. Um, it's like buying a used car. You know, you're buying someone else's problems. You can sell, sell your problems to someone else. So the problem here is that black will not take on c6. So what should black play here? Okay, so e3 is still looking pretty weak, and then if you were to just trade bishops, then the pawn structure would be pretty irrevocably damaged. Yeah, irrevocable, exactly. So this threatens mate, so they can't do anything fancy in the middle. Yeah. They have to take back, and now we can take however we want on c6. I might choose my d-pawn just to get the bishop out, even though my structure is worse. I like the idea of having that good bishop. So um, this is just a sideline to illustrate how um, the weaknesses, it's actually like a complex of weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And probably white was thinking, okay, I need to avoid getting that bad pawn structure uh, from several moves earlier. So they might've had some psychological inertia. Or they're like, I'm gonna keep thinking that way, even though this is an exceptional case, and the exception being that if I just go for it, it activates the rook, and then they win the f-pawn. So they didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. So they should have done that, which is why I thought f3 was a weird move. I thought they would, I thought they would just castle, because I can't yeah. immediately take the bishop. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see why. Like Your pattern recognition can kind of betray you. I even had a couple of videos where it's, the title of the video is like, your pattern recognition betrays you, your pattern recognition betrays you again. <laughs> and it's, it's situations like this where you know, like, oh, Black's always trying to do this. And then yeah. your, uh, like, bullet chest moment is, you're like, okay, I'm going to stop it. I don't want to think about it yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. But the move yeah. itself is not that good. It turns out that, you know, it's the exception, not the rule. Mm -hmm. So anyway, F3 happened. I played Bishop D7. And um, let's take White's perspective here for a second. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just try to answer the three questions. Let me know what you think they are. Mm -hmm. The answers, anyway. Yeah. Okay, so... I think just along that diagonal, the bishop is looking weaker than the knight. So, Which bishop? Uh, Which diagonal? Bishop on e3 is looking weaker than 
uh, knight on d4. Like, not in terms of the squares that it can reach, but just it's poorly placed. What's poor about its placement? Um, just oh, trying okay, to calibrate your intuition here. Play. Yeah, so, like, the only open squares that it has is a diagonal, which is actually just good for the bishop, because you can only attack by being in its sights. Yeah. Okay, so then... Um, I think the knight on b1 is still looking pretty sleepy, so... Yeah. And also the, the rook on a1 is just... Yeah, dozing. Not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like worst place piece type mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. How about tactical targets? I usually address that first just to be... You know, if there's a win, I don't want to miss it. Yeah. Oh. Um... And this can change move to move, by the way. Yeah. You might have to answer this question like many, many times during one game. Mm -hmm. It's tempting to just try and kick the the knight on e5 with the pawn on f4. Mm -hmm. But then I don't know what the consequences are if the queen takes it instead. Well, then, then I would just take the queen, so I guess it's not that bad. Right. But yeah. you know what black would want to do, right? What's your opponent's idea if, if they can freely move that knight? Just move it behind uh that pawn maybe or just to the side where, where? it can't be where in, where in particular i can't follow and when you don't say the names of the squares yeah okay so so if the pawn just moved up to f4 then uh -huh. maybe the knight wants to uh sort of slide out of the way and then go to so i like where is it sliding to? <laughs> C four is unsafe. Yeah. D four or D three is also unsafe. Um, F three is also unsafe and G, yeah, G four is also unsafe. So are you sure? I guess the only way to go. Hold on. How many attackers yeah. and defenders are there on G four? So it's being attacked by. Oh, okay. So I'm supported by the bishop on G four. So that's actually not so bad. Right, so we already saw a variation where that's what black wants to do. Okay. And the reason that that was the exception, like the reason that black couldn't really do that before, was that white had already castled. So the move f3, and then on the next move playing f4, which is even slower, right, mm -hmm. two moves with one piece, yeah. um, it's not going to, to work anymore in their favor. So black would take the advantage once they can get okay. rid of that bishop. Yeah. So... Um, oh, by the way, it's worth mentioning that even though it doesn't mess up their pawn structure, if they can take that bishop or drive it back, that's really good for black because then they get the bishop Points. pair, which I yeah. think we'll talk about next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the final the final countdown yeah. where we actually talk about the bishop pair, which I think is one of the most important strategic advantages. The, oh. <laughs> the Cliff Notes version is if you have two bishops and the position is pretty clear, like all of your pawns are mobile or gone, that's good for you. Oh. And, and we define bishop pair as just you have two and they have one or less. Mm -hmm. Easy. So, yeah, you can figure out how to navigate that just by knowing the definition of a bishop pair. But we'll, we'll yeah, see some examples, too. Controlling both colors and yeeting about. Ye, and from far away. So it's hard to like deal <laughs> yeah. with that problem. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so playing knight g4 and knight takes e3 is really, really good for black. So f4 doesn't quite work. I'll, I'll play it out just so that you can see this in your notes later on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if they have to retreat... That's pretty bad, you know, like this is good. And retreating in itself isn't bad, but you can see that once the bishop is tucked away, first of all, this pawn's hanging. Yeah. This is already like certain death. Um, yeah. But even if you go somewhere like here, um, you really need to get those pieces out, and this is not helping that whatsoever. Right. Okay. So um, that's why f4 is no bueno. Mm -hmm. So we, we said that the knight on b1 is the worst place piece and we're gonna forego criticizing the rooks too much because they are rooks after all um tactical targets we've seen that our bishop on e3 is a target um any other tactical targets worth mentioning I'm just looking at each of the pawns in turn, but I'm not really seeing anything okay. particularly let's, cool about yeah, it. Yeah, let's say that we have a complete list, just for yeah. sake of argument. Um, what's the opponent's idea? Um, 
Which is kind of like saying, what do they want to play next? Yeah. That's another way you could think of that. I might... It's always, like... The brain dead thing to do is just check and continue checking, but like it doesn't always shake out great. So yeah, um, in this case, they don't have any useful checks yet. No. So. So how can they improve their pieces? You know, they could also be asking themselves, "What's my worst place piece?" Mhm. Mm yeah. So what is their worst place piece? Um. I think I want to see the the bishop on d7 like gain some more range so maybe i might move it up to um okay never mind all those pieces are being or all the squares are being attacked well even if they weren't you know let's pretend that c6 was good all right just yeah. just for sake of argument you know it's protected twice yeah. attacked one time yeah, maybe yeah. you're cool with giving it up because you don't like it that much anyway you're criticizing this bishop mm -hmm. um yeah, so after we've cyber-bullied this bishop enough, um, I think you would want to compare, is that bishop really so badly placed compared to, like, the rooks or the king? No, I guess not. It's not. So maybe I would castle. <laughs> yeah, castling is one of those things that we learned, like, right away. You know, castle early, castle often. So definitely black wants to castle. But which way do you think they should go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got options this time. I think so far in all the games we've looked at, it's like, kingside castling is the best. But now... You know, it's in one move they can castle, and it doesn't really matter which one you pick, because they should yeah. both be fine. Yeah, I think in this case, just out of like, I guess brain dead beginner heuristics, I want to go. I still want to go kingside because, um, like, the opponent's structure is looking pretty weak on that side, and also they have more pieces on side okay so you're kind of saying that black has the advantage on the king side so we might want to put our our king there as well mm -hmm. and if we go to the queen side we might get under attack because they have more pieces pointing that way is that right. okay yeah. i think that's a fair argument it, I, it's a pretty even split between like should i go queen side should i go king side mm -hmm. uh, they're they're both good i think that either one of those is definitely what they would want to do mm -hmm. so Based on this pretty thorough assessment, what do you think white should play? Hmm. Oh. I think I'll probably just take the knight and put it on d2 just so it's not the worst place piece anymore that or is exactly what is, they did but... okay they did do that however there is a major caveat so this last question what is my opponent's idea i think it's the trickiest yeah. question for many reasons yeah. number one you have to understand fully like how do they want to conduct the position if you do nothing now yeah. the thing that i think is the trickiest is once you've settled on a move that you want to play you should be mm -hmm. careful to ask yourself what is my opponent's idea at that point too mm -hmm. because whatever move you choose to play might give them new ideas that they didn't have on that last move. This is basically my drawback principle. You might have seen my video where I said, like, here's the drawback principle. If you play a move, what could possibly go wrong because of that move? So let's let's see what's the answer to that. After knight d2, what could possibly go wrong? Some new idea that black didn't have before. Mm. Okay, so you're also just like removing the protection that the queen offers on d1. Yeah. And then uh, the knight on d4 becomes extra vulnerable. Okay. Is there anything else that becomes vulnerable? Mm -hmm. You said like d1, d4. Mm -hmm. Anything else in between? The king? <laughs> the king, yeah, but 
not directly, like, uh, just going further along that line of reasoning that we block the queen on the whole d file, are there any other vulnerable squares on the d file? Or is it just d4? d3. d3 as well, then? Okay. So how could black exploit that? Oh, okay. Did you just go for the check, then? Yeah, exactly. So it's it's not, like, a straightforward, obvious decision. I did a little bit of calculation yeah. here. And yeah. d two was not great. They should have just castled, which is an example of improving your worst place piece. You, you improve the sure. king, you improve the rook, and then later you can move the knight. Right. So um, that would have been better. Um, mm -hmm. I think... I think that was the only move that really made sense to me at the time, castling. Yeah. But anyway, they did this. So I got this little cheap shot check in there, which ruins yeah. their castling and drastically alters the course of the game. But okay. here we have a, a critical decision to make. Um, our knight is hanging. We should probably deal with that. Um, how do we deal with it? This is a, a tactics calculation moment. Uh, if you do the if, yeah I'm trying to see if I can defend it with other pieces that just sort of go in and try and create a line to the knight but I don't see any right now yeah none of them exist so okay. I think that's a correct assessment mm -hmm. but otherwise in terms of escapes I might just go back to e5 no, that's not very or, ambitious. I mean, you could, but... Okay, no, maybe I'll just go deeper. Fuck it. Um, yeah. Uh, that's what she said. <laughs> so I'm liking attacking the queen by going knight takes b2. Uh -huh. But then there's always two ways to do it, so... I have to also consider f2, but then, like, that just gets eaten by yeah. uh, a bishop. So what are your options if you had to narrow it down to, like, two or three? Mm -hmm. In terms of knight uh, moves. So I see e5, mm -hmm. b2, and that's it. <laughs> I think there's one more that you should consider. Okay. Uh, Look a little more. Yeah. Earlier you missed a move like this too. It's a square that looks yeah. unsafe initially, but it's protected by another piece. Ah, okay. So is it B4? B4, no, because if they take with okay. a pawn, it doesn't matter if you protect that a thousand times. They're still happy okay. to take the knight. Yeah, so they're probably F4 then, right. since we can just go in and be deep. <laughs> yes. So these are the three options that make the most sense. Knight b2, knight e5, and knight f4. Mm -hmm. So knight b2 looks like a free pawn. So mm -hmm. why don't we start with that? What could go okay. wrong if you play knight b2? Um, they're just kind of stuck there. So, I mean... How do they exploit that? I mean, first your queen needs to move out of the way mm -hmm. because otherwise it's just going to get launched. Yeah. Launched. We don't want that. Yeah. So instead, I would put the queen in a more attacking position relative to the knight. So maybe um, c1, uh, b2. Pick one. So you have you have three places that attack the knight, but only one of them yeah. is actually good. So oh, okay. It's a real tactics puzzle moment. Okay. Uh, classic light chess puzzle where like every move looks fine but only one of them is good <laughs> yeah <laughs> and this comes down to the three questions again like what is my opponent's idea for instance I can tell you that queen c1 is definitely bad what do you think black okay. will play after after that so they don't want to lose the knight not for free anyway yeah. yeah and then from there. So then would 
would the other pieces like hanging out in the back have something fun to do as yes. soon as that okay <laughs> but it also has to do with saving the night for sure yeah um i think i just thought I mean, of a second solution too okay hmm. i think you have multiple good moves after queen c1 in particular yeah so i think the bishop could definitely go in and just protect at um a3 in yeah. which case that sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there might be a downside for it, though. Mm -hmm. So um, let me suggest that they could play knight b1 to attack that bishop. And that could be a problem. Yeah. So there's another solution to how to, how to defend. So it would be like knight b2, queen c1, and then some way where your knight is not hanging anymore at all. By the way, your bishop's already well placed, so... It, I would prioritize bringing the knight back out over moving that bishop again to a square where it's okay. like, why am I really here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so probably I'd want to be in... Um... F4, just so that I'm still fairly... Oh no, st still going down this line of reasoning. So let's say that we go oh, here. Okay. So yeah. now we're looking for a safe square. Okay. You are right, though. Knight f4 is better for that reason. So sure. this kind of shows the benefit of doing this calculation. Like, even if that line that you calculated isn't what you play, it can tell you what else to play. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can just go back on b4. Gives the, the b4? bishop on d7. Oh, yeah. So a4, right? Because you're mentioning oh, this yeah, d7 yeah. bishop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. So... Yeah. The bishop is protecting it, mm -hmm. and that that's that. Like you, you snuck away with your pawn. So mm -hmm. if we don't want the knight to go here, if that's our opponent's idea, how do we attack mm -hmm. the knight, save the queen, and prevent knight a four? Oh, all in one move. Oh, no, doesn't work. Or does it? Actually, does does a four just? Nope, queen's Pawn hanging. Goes up. Queen's yeah, hanging. Okay. If the queen yeah, was not yeah. hanging, you could play a4, and that would help. Okay. So c1 is bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so that leaves c2 and b1. Right. So if I go c2, then does it actually prevent that from happening? No. So instead, I Are have you to sure? go b1. You went pretty quick to that. Let's say uh, they, let's say they play knight a4 after queen c2. Yeah. Like, what uh, will you play? I mean, if I if I just continue yeah. taking anyway, then... Which is, like, my impulse, because, I mean... It's forcing. I guess it's a, Yeah, it's just also a beginner player thing. Like, but, if I see, I must take. But you should look at forcing first. You, sh you shouldn't yeah. play it immediately, but, like, you should always look at it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we take it. They take back, I guess, and then... And then... Oh, and then I guess my queen can just take and check. Right, back. so c2 okay. is the best spot because it, it maintains that control of, of a4. Okay, yeah, I just think I, like, messed up the exchange and I thought that I was, like, the one at the end rather than yeah. the one... Yeah, that's why it's good turn. to slow down. Like, it, it's yeah. easy to make these kinds of mistakes if you're going too fast through it. Mm -hmm. Usually you'll you'll gain speed by training slowly. It, it's maybe mm -hmm. counterintuitive, but that's, that's how it goes. It makes sense, yeah. So knight f4 is what I chose for the reason mm -hmm. that knight b2 doesn't work. But actually, I had wanted to go there in the first place. I made sure that I couldn't play knight b2 before I played knight d3. Right. I just wanted to see if it was even worth it. Because, for instance, if I played the move knight e5, I would still be slightly better. But I did just play two moves in a row just to ruin their castling. So yeah. it, it's possible I could be misevaluating it. So good to be very careful in such cases. So okay. I did this one. They took it because the knight is insufferable. I mm -hmm. took it back which is nice, and then they play knight c4. Okay, so let's take black's perspective. Mm -hmm. So again, three questions like, what are the targets? I think the worst place piece is definitely the king. Yeah, king is worst place for white. And what's our yeah. worst place piece for black? Uh, 
I want to say the bishop, but there's a pawn just chilling behind it, and it's also in a very active spot. So both bishops are doing well, actually. Yeah. Even though we can't like move them somewhere else, they're they're already on good good places. They're on good terms with their Otherwise, situation. Otherwise, maybe just the knight, because I guess the rooks don't need to be super cyber bullied, but also the king, since it's just. I think I think you're undervaluing the activity of the rooks and also the safety of your king pretty consistently. Yeah. So you should pay attention oh. to that. <laughs> Like, here, black should definitely be trying to castle, but that doesn't mean it's the best move, because that's just one question, right? Worst place piece. Right. You could, like, bullet chest, just quickly castle and move on with your life, but yeah. we also have to consider the weaknesses and their idea. So first of all, um, what are the possible targets in this position? Oh, um, I see, like, a pawn double attack on d5. Okay, so that's basically saying that e4 and c4 are, are weaknesses. Right. Okay. Um, are there any other weaknesses that you care about? Besides the king and that? Yeah. It's good to get a full inventory because these are kind of like your, your building blocks for a winning attack. You need to know what all the pieces are so you can put them together the right way. Uh, I think the knights are pretty well supported. And otherwise, like... They could still be attacked, though. For example, the knight on c4, we just saw that d5 is a move. There's also b5. Yeah. Um, and the knight on d4, if it's so good, we could take it. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we do have reason to believe that those those pieces could be under attack, too. Right. But also, the rooks are just chilling in the corner. Mm -hmm. Also, um, don't forget that an empty square can be a weakness. Because if mm -hmm. you can... A, a good way to think about the weaknesses, if you can occupy that spot... And it wins Without for you, it's anything. a weakness. Yeah. Okay. Imagine if you could okay. safely occupy E3, for example. Yeah. <laughs> you would probably win, right? So, yeah. and the only thing that guards it is that knight. Mm -hmm. So you actually hit on the right move, D5, already. Mm -hmm. This this move is um, opening the center of the board when the yeah. king is stuck in the center of the board. That's more important than castling, which is why I did that okay. right now. So they played queen d2. This was actually the opponent's idea. We didn't we didn't get to that part, but we didn't really need to um, in this case. Um, do you think we should trade queens or no? No deal for now. No deal. So we play queen f6. <laughs> okay. Um, they took on d5. I took back on d5. They played rook e1. And what should black play? Um... The most forcing thing I can see right now is uh Oh, um Knight F four check. Okay. What do you think they'll play? They're either gonna move away or capture with the queen, and if they capture with the queen, I have a queen that's just looking directly at it. Yeah, so they probably won't do that. Mm hmm What do you think? the opponent's idea was like why did they play rookie one uh, so that if the king moves to a safer location and does like a pseudo castle then the rook is looking at your uncastled king right so if you play knight f4 does that address the fact that they want to move the king anyway uh no no so actually they'll play king d1 check and we have to backpedal because we're in check yeah and then they can okay. get their king to safety so yeah, they'd true. probably play king d1 and then king c1. That's kind of their idea. Mm -hmm. So with their idea in hand, we should probably, I don't know, maybe improve our worst place piece. Okay. So how would you do it? Castle? Which way? King side. Why? Uh. If you consider the tactical targets, don't you have some other options like if you castle long your rook is more involved right yeah what would your rook be attacking if you castle long i thought that like since you're castling king side then the rook would be closer to uh the file that's being well that happens that no matter which way you castle yeah. okay sure so in that case like if i want my king to be away from all this like all these sniper scopes, then mm -hmm. maybe I'd go in the opposite direction. It's not about our king safety, because we're just on the attack. See what this rook is doing? Okay. Yeah. It's attacking uh, all the weaknesses again. But okay, it's nice. just through other pieces, so it's harder to see. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
So now we still have the idea of knight f4. So now if it was white's turn, they'd be like, oh, my opponent's idea is knight f4 now. This is dangerous. Um, yeah. Here they played the move knight c2, which was a blunder. They should probably have addressed their problems a little bit better. Um, yeah. Although it, it, it does get hard to figure out what to do. Now, yeah. this move, I think, was critical for me winning the game. Yeah. Because based on the attacking lesson that we did, you can see that all the black pieces are ready to go. Right, They're all on good squares. Uh, the opponent's king is weak. Their development's behind. Um, it's hard to really make your pieces much better than they are. And that's usually a sign that you should strike and destroy and burn, maim, you know, all that all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, but knight c2 had an idea behind it. What do you think white was up to when they played that? What's their plan? Uh, so the squares in front of the knight that are being protected right now after it's moved into that position are... Um, b4, e3, b4, and then a3. Right. So that might have something to do with what the knight wants to do. For example, maybe it wants to go on e3 to block the, the king. Mm -hmm. But just because they move that piece doesn't mean that their idea is with that piece. It could be because it changes how it relates to the yeah. other pieces. Okay. So what else okay. changed after knight c2? Oh, so now a queen can potentially take the, the knight that's on d5 that's being a very annoying piece. Right, that's part of their idea. Mm -hmm. And also, the thing that they should have done is bring their king to safety, which they didn't do yeah. in the last couple of moves. So that's still kind of their idea. They want to play a move like king f1, king g1, and run away. Well, king g1 they can't play, but if they can play knight e3, yeah. then they could. So you see how it's all kind of fitting together. They want to go build some safe place to live on the king side. Yeah. So f for this reason, um, I played a move which is kind of crazy. I know that they want to play queen takes d5. I know that they want to play king f1. And I want to ruin both of those things at the same time. Yes. So let's see if you can find it. I'll give you a couple minutes, like maybe two minutes. Okay. Uh... So if I'm going to do like the three questions thing right now, yeah, then clearly the weakness is the king. Right. And the worst place piece is also the king. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the idea now um, is to try and take that, that knight that's causing a lot of problems that they don't want to be on um, f4. Yeah, for example, f4. Yeah. So... Then, like, I guess one option would be to just directly go for f4, but then then you'll just get eaten by something. Yeah, I could just take uh, it. Yeah, you could also just take it, which is not a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll um, gladly pay them Tuesday for the price of the f-pawn. Yeah. But also you something. have some, like, like, three different ways to check right now. So there's a uh, rook from... There's more than three. To, there's a lot okay, of ways. Yeah. <laughs> There's many ways to check right now. Mm -hmm. um, you can move the queen into three different uh, squares. So uh, e5 to 7 are all there. Mm -hmm. And then either of the rooks can also move onto e8. Um, and then any of these is going to force the king out of the way. Um, you trade a rook or something, but maybe you don't want to because maybe they can continue helping you attack. They, the problem with playing moves like rook e8 check is that it's forcing them to play what they want to do, right? We know that they want to play king f1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. let's think a little bit more deeply about the weaknesses, right? So let's yeah. say that they're going to run to 2f1, right? That's what they want to do on the next move. Is there any yeah. way that we could make it so that um, we have access to the weaknesses when they finally do run there? Or maybe they're going to try king d1. How are we going to exploit the the king running to d1? We need to be ready for both of those escape strategies. Yeah. So I thought of this as you were explaining like stuff about the position before that I already forgot. <laughs> like <laughs> the move I was looking at was bishop b5 to pin the the knight. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. So let's say you play bishop to b5. Mm -hmm. And I play... Um, a4. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Just as an exercise. Mm -hmm. Let's say. I think I might take the knight anyway. Oh, like bishop takes c4? Yeah. Okay, I'll take back. Now what? So far, nothing to write home about, right? So far okay. in this line, we just, you know, exchanged a couple pieces. Then I would check with, uh, with the knight on f4, opening the file so that I can just take the queen. Exactly. Because the king has to deal with the right. knight first. Yeah. So we've hit on a really important detail here. Like, whatever you do, eventually we're going to reach a position like this Yeah. if you move the bishop. So all bishop moves become candidate moves here. Right. Bishop b5 is one good move. Um, probably it would give them a moment to fix their mistake, though. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like, you're not actually threatening to take this knight. It's... Yeah. You're pinning it, which is very good, but this does give them a moment to try to run away. You should still be winning, but mm -hmm. I think there's something even more precise than this. I think bishop okay. b5 is already kind of good enough, but do you want to give it one more one more shot? Okay. Um... So, I think the rest of the ones on the left side are not great, necessarily. Yeah, they definitely on the queen side, they're not going to be better than bishop b5. That's the most active one there. Yeah. So then, on king side, um, if I go e6, then I'm blocking the view for the rooks. Right, so that doesn't make sense. Think about the weaknesses. Yeah. How do you attack the weaknesses with the bishop? Oh. Okay, so so the knight just moved into this position that I can very easily just poke my my diagonal into. But remember, and... they want to put the knight back on d4 to fix their problem, right? So mm. if you play bishop f5, they'll play knight d4. Okay, yeah. And cover it all up. You should still be winning. Yeah. There's another weakness that you haven't noticed yet. It's mm -hmm. f3. So oh, f3 okay. is a weakness, g2 is a weakness, because those are the pawns yeah. that need to shelter the king when it goes to f1. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. But there's nothing really protecting them except the king, so... Mm -hmm. So this becomes like a little bishop sacrifice, but then... Yeah. But then you're just converting it into a positional advantage. Yeah, so what's the move to sac for these pawns? Uh, bishop g4. Bishop g4 is probably good. I played bishop h3. But this okay. is a very similar kind of idea. Mm -hmm. um, if they play a move like this, then we should have some kind of resounding attack going on here. Like, mm -hmm. maybe start with activating the rook. Mm -hmm. um, if they go here, we could maybe, like, chop. And maybe chop this one. Mm -hmm. Start throwing some more checks. I'm not sure because it's not as not as strong as bishop h3. I only had eyes for for this move, really. Yeah, um, because then it doubles as well, and then... There's another sneaky point here. So mm -hmm. they played a desperate move. They played knight d6 and just lost miserably. But after a move like knight d4, um, just to illustrate the idea, I could check. And if they went here, uh, I could take. And here there's a winning move for... Um, black, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. You want to give it a shot, see if you can f spot the move. Okay. Something very forcing, something about the weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, queen takes f3? Yeah, exactly. And then they can only really cower Cry. in terror. Yeah, <laughs> like, maybe <laughs> maybe go here, but then we could take this one, and then we're at least winning a, a rook. Yeah. Because... Like they're they're running out of legal moves here. Like maybe I would take this, and then this, and threaten mate. Mm -hmm. 
looks very, very bad, very sad. So he played knight d6 to try to survive. And yeah. now queen d6. And then they took this one. And then after queen f4, they have all the same problems that they had before, plus the queen's hanging. Yeah. So they played g3, um, desperate. But then with this check, they don't have any other yeah. good moves. So if they play king d1, we take on d5 with check. And mm -hmm. you know that's the only real option here. So they resigned. Mm -hmm. So interesting game it has a lot of op opportunities for trying out the the three questions and evaluating the position does show up over and over again. I think even if you're just armed with these two tools, the the three point evaluation of the position and the three questions, you're already in really great shape to you know read read chess books and learn theory or like understand the positional ideas as you go through grandmaster games or something because you can already make very good practical decisions. And that's a good place to be starting from when you're learning the more abstract parts of chess. Nice. Yes. Um, I have another game here, but I don't know if we need to get into it. Um, mm -hmm. I'll just leave it there for you to look at. It's the next one in the study. Okay. Alrighty. Do you have any questions or you could, you could always save them for later. Yeah. Alrighty. I can, I can. <laughs> well, okay. I'll stop the recording here then. Thank you. Thanks.